these are five mistakes that I see in almost every Microsoft Teams setup. And if you're making even one of them, then it's slowing your team down. So today we will break down each of these mistakes from Teams versus channels to notes and meetings so that you can fix your setup fast. Before we jump in, there is a new feature that has recently been released that is causing a lot of confusion for my audience. So if you've noticed that your Teams tab is missing from the left navigation, then this is for you. Otherwise, feel free to skip ahead to this time here. So let's head up to the ellipses on the top right, go settings, and then chats and channels. And at the very top, if you are in the separate view, then your chats and teams will be separated. However, if you go into the combined view, then it consolidates your chats and your teams tab into one tab called chats. The new combined feature has created a fair bit of confusion, but it can be beneficial because it reduces context switching by keeping everything together in one place. And my pro tip, if you are going to use the combined feature is to add sections so that you can organize your priority chats and channels at the top for easy access. Now that we have clarified this new feature, we can dive into the rest of the tutorial. And for demonstration purposes, I will be using the separate view. And by the way, my name's Amy, let's nerd out. Let's start off with the first one, which is misuse of chats and channels, which is the biggest mistake that I see in almost all of my coaching clients. Let's start off with chats. So most people use chats to have team conversations because it's quick and it's easy. But the problem is that chats do not belong to a team. So if somebody leaves your organization, then those conversations will leave with them as well. Whereas with teams, when we have conversations inside of a team's channel, then those conversations belong to the team, ensuring that everybody can easily access them later. But the original way to collaborate inside of a team was by a post or an announcement, which was not really a conversational way to collaborate with your team members on projects. So Microsoft has released a new feature. And if we go down and hover over your channel, select the ellipses, and then go edit channel. At the bottom here, we have layout and the new feature is threads. So if we save that, then this changes the layout in the channel and you'll notice at the top here that it now says conversations. So this is the thread layout and it makes it so that we can have a more natural conversation with our team members. And if you would like me to do a separate tutorial on this new threads feature, then drop a comment below. This new feature does not make the post layout redundant. My pro tip is that if you want to broadcast or have one way communication within a channel, then use the post layout. Whereas if your team is actively working with each other and collaborating on a project, then go with threads. Mistake number two is messy folder structure. And this is something that happens behind the scenes and you may not even know that you are doing it. So let's take a closer look. So if you navigate to the first channel within your team and go to documents, then this will bring you to the shared document library for the team. And the best part about Teams is that everybody on your team automatically gets access to all of these documents, which creates effective collaboration on projects and other aspects within your organization. But it's important to note here that for every channel created within your team, a folder is automatically created in the shared document library. So if your channels are messy, then so will your document library, leading to messy files and folder structure. So my pro tip is to set up your channels intentionally. And you can think about channels as creating a document hierarchy. So if you want to create a folder in your document library, then chances are you're going to want to create a channel. Mistake number three is if you are still using the notes tab inside of a Teams channel, which is part of the OneNote integration within Teams. And OneNote, we are all familiar with it, but it is not built for modern day collaboration. We can now add a Microsoft Loop workspace directly into a Teams channel where your team members can co-edit notes, tasks, and plans. And the best part is that they stay updated in real time across other 365 apps. Microsoft Loop is faster, more flexible, and it is built for teamwork and even makes collaboration a little bit fun. My pro tip is that if you are new to Microsoft Loop, then I've got a free download guide in the description that shows you nine simple steps 
to get started with Microsoft Loop. Number four is managing projects and tasks inside of an Excel spreadsheet. And if your organization is doing this, then you are missing out on one of the most powerful integrations with Microsoft Teams. The new planner experience inside of Microsoft Teams lets you add a task board directly into your channel so that you can assign tasks, track progress, and collaborate all without leaving Teams. And the best part is that tasks assigned to team members sync with Microsoft Planner as well as To Do. My pro tip is to pin Planner to your left navigation. So we can select the ellipses on the left hand side, locate Planner, then right click on the app, and then go pin. This way, the app will be pinned to your left navigation for easy access. And finally, mistake number five is disorganized meetings that have no agenda, no notes, and no follow up tasks. When you add an agenda to your team's meeting, it unlocks collaborative meeting notes powered by Microsoft Loop. And the best part is that these notes update in real time and are accessible during the meeting from the notes tab or afterward in the Microsoft Loop app. My pro tip is to share your Loop meeting notes to a new workspace. Go to shared locations on the top right, add it to a workspace, and then select your desired workspace. And in this tutorial, we have walked through a bunch of features that involve Microsoft Loop. And if you want to learn how Microsoft Loop solves the number one issue with Microsoft 365, you can check out this video here.